started. Let's, go, let's keep this timely and we'll, we'll try to uh, move the meeting along. So if no one's here longer than they need to be, thank you all for coming. It's not always easy to show up at 7 o'clock on a weekday, so we appreciate that. Uh, Mike will be joining us soon. He's showing my nine-year-old where the restrooms are. Um, what we tried to do is uh, just break the meeting down into some of the topics that we thought people were interested in the last meeting and various uh, people who are here will try to speak to each topic. I'll start right uh, with curbside recycling. Uh, the big thing that we heard the last time was that people really wanted every other week pickup because one of the major problems we've had over the last uh, year of this and in the trial one is that every few months there will be a month that has five weeks and then there ends up being a two to three week period. Last year it actually happened around Christmas which couldn't have been the uh, worst time for that where you're just hanging on to your recycling for a very, very long time in your garage and it's totally over overflowing. Um, the good news is we are engaged with our uh, recycling uh, contractor Sullivan's right now. We're working to try to work out a scenario where uh, we will get every other week one thing that we have committed to, and Mark, I just want to get confirmation, is that should we not be able to work it out with the contractor that we're working with, on those odd weeks, the city will commit to pick up the recycling for those weeks uh, to make sure that it happens. So we will be going to every other week recycling. Um, regardless of how this works out, that's one of the things we were, uh, we were able to do. Is there any, anybody have any thoughts or comments on that? You feel good? Yes, sir. Compared to the way it is. Well, the way it is now, what happens, because you have a week, a month that may have, have five weeks. Yeah, that's why people pay check and get three weeks. So much right. Well, what we're trying to do is we're actually shifting so that the recycling does get picked up that way. Because right now, it's why what's the problem? There is no. No, the problem was that it was that it's not currently being picked up that way. Because that's not how the original contract was set up. It was set up for two weeks a month, and one of the major complaints that we heard or, or comments that we got from the last feedback was people didn't want to have to go you know every couple of months and have that two or three week period where there was no pickup recycling so we have worked that out and we are going to be going to every other week recycling so so that will happen um, thank you thank you thank you very much starting july one thank you mike uh, and Mike, I think Mike now will speak to address the uh, topic of bags. Bags. Mark's going to do that. Oh, Mark's going to do that. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Uh, we picked out what we feel are the most common store brand items. Excuse me, can you speak up just a little bit? Yes. Thank you. We picked up what we felt were the more common store brand items, Hefty and Glad, in similar size ranges to what we currently have for the pay as you throw bags, waste zero bags. Uh, so there's remarkable similarities in size and shape. I can help you with the props if you need. <laughs> These are the small bags. Front one is a hefty 13 gallon and a glad 13 gallon kitchen bag. Size and shape very similar. Capacity is a little bit different. Uh, the name brands are 13 gallons, the waste zero bag is 15 gallons. What I've been told is the metric measurements may be in decimals. If this bag is 14.6, it's rated as a 15 gallon bag. If these bags are 13.5, they're still rated as a 13 gallon bag, not a 14. But very close in size and shape. The difference is strength. These are 1.35 mils, reinforced plastic linings. These are, the GLAD bag is 0.95, so 40 decimals less. 
This one, the hefty bag, is 0 0.90, 45 less for strength, strength rating. The large bags, again hefty and glad, 30 gallon bags. <clears throat> Front one is uh, a glad bag. And um, as you can see, very similar. Actually, the 30 gallon name brand items are a little bit smaller. Yeah. So the capacity of the, the purple bag may be a little bit beyond 30 gallons. Okay. These are one um, 1.50 mil. The hefty 30 gallon bag is 1.05, so 45 mils less for strength. And the clad bag is 1.05, 45 less than the purple bag in strength. Now the main uh, Comments where the teeth were not were breaking or coming apart at the, at the uh, drawstrings. There is a number on everyone's bag, and it says, "Please report bag quality issues to Waste Zero." There's a one eight hundred number. So, if anybody experiences any problems or quality difficulties with the bags, call that one eight hundred number and. You your bags will be replaced. Please try to hang on to what you have and don't be retrieved. I know that one of our taxpayers has called and gotten and gotten bags shipped to him that he thought was defective. Right. Yep. So, yep. Um, uh, one thing we've looked at, because I don't know, I use the small bags, and I, I, it seems to me that more people use this size than the bigger ones, and that's where we're having more of the complaints. As Mark said, these are 1.35, the bigger ones are 1.5, so we're looking at going to a 1.5 thickness with the smaller ones, just to make these a little more rugged. <clears throat> it's going to cost more, and we're checking into that price. I don't know if you got a... I didn't get a price. You didn't get a price yet. Um, and we have two folks from Waste Zero tonight with us, so people have specific questions about how the bags are made. I'm sure they can help you, but... Um, Everything that we've gotten back in terms of responses from Waste Zero have been very, very prompt and um, on target. So we are thinking of ordering a stronger bag. I'd like to comment, I've used a smaller bag. I'm a frugal kind of guy and I stuff those stuff. suckers full <laughs> to the point where I hold my breath when the truck comes and they go in. I have not had a problem. You haven't had a problem. They've worked out well for me. And, and I just want to add too, um, one of the things we talked about the last time was had learned that the town of Cumberland uh, had some bags that were different, they didn't have drawstrings, and so I think people didn't, there was no issue obviously with the rip ties or anything like that, because they don't exist on those bags, and people thought they were a little heftier. Cumberland actually uses Waste Zero, and they have gone through, um, I believe they just recently had gone to heavier, heavier. heavier bags. They did increase the cost um, a, a bit, um, but that's one of the things that, as we go on, if, if people say, hey, look, you know, I, I, I don't want to throw out a price, I don't want to bring under the bus over there, but um, it is something that we can look at, that there is a variety of bags, um, and Waste Zero has to step forward and say, actually, no, we actually work with a lot of municipalities, and, and here are the differences, you know, there is a lot of options and a lot of leeway um, for us to work with this, if that's what people want. Um, I think it was an interesting exercise, because. What I learned was maybe my bag ripped open because I stuff about 20 times more than I do with my store brand bag. So. Yes, sir. Do you still plan on keeping the small bags at 15 gallons? Because you were talking about other bags being smaller. So what was the point on that, I guess? We can stay with this size. So you're going to stay with 15 gallons, yep. correct? Yeah. Now, the other thing that I'm thinking is just because the bags are thicker doesn't mean they're stronger. It depends what material they're made out of. That's a, that's a very good point. 
And, and I know Stu reminded me of that too the other day. You're right, right on that. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I personally do try to use a small bag with the recycling. I'm able to keep it to, to one small bag a week, and that's the reason why I'm asking about size, because 15 gallons every week just about makes, makes it work for me. You know, I'd rather not buy bigger bags because I want to be cost conscious, I guess I would yep. say. Uh, we found that most towns that we looked at use these two sizes. Yeah, Cumberland does. Yep. And Cumberland decided to go to 1.5 thickness on the small one. Because this is 1.35 now. So you said Cumberland doesn't have the drawstring at the top? No, they, they do, in fact. <coughs> is that what you said, Nick? Uh, they what have my father-in-law has been using. Oh, I'm sorry. Twist tie. They have what? Twist tie. Oh, I'm they, sorry. they do not have that. So I'm sorry, what that I'm means wrong. is that if you have a trash can and you want to ring it around, it just prevents having that. Because uh, okay. I think a lot of the breakage happens when you yank on the string sometimes right. in, in the bag ways. Okay, so they have twist ties, is what you said? Yeah. yeah. So that would make it more difficult to stuff the bag, I guess I would say, wouldn't it? And hang on to the twist and yeah. when you need them. Yeah. You also tend to lose actual gallon capacity yes, of what you, you can fit in because you need to leave room either to tie. you don't use the twist tie yeah. and you tie a knot, so you need to leave room yeah. for that material to tie the knot, so you're losing So my goal is to keep that. Or yeah, it's I, also less plastic to make yes. the drawstring versus the twist tie I, I guess unless we need differently, we'd probably stick with a draw string. I think it's a good idea. And I will say, I stuff mine so full, they're usually never closed. It just sits wide open. Um, I kind of try to squeeze it up a little bit and just hold it up to the side. And, and Mark, the guys are great. They still pick it up. And they, uh, they've been very flexible what they're willing to pick up and throw in the back. Yeah, yeah Charlie. I've read my bag good both hands. <laughs> you know that, you know what I mean? I, I know they ain't gonna break on me. There you go. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't just throw them like this. Yeah. Small ones or big ones? Big ones. Big ones. Well, I have a small one in case I have at the end of the week. You know what I mean? I want to have a little bit, then I use a small one. Yeah. But I use them both. We have three questions, three hands I saw. So who are you, Steve, and you? Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to say I love it. I have totally changed the way I clean my house, what I buy at the supermarket. I only use two bags a month. Wow. Mind you, I have a compost pile, so that helps. Yeah, that helps. But I only, and I, I use a larger bag for things that don't smell, and I let them accumulate in the garage, and then when the bag is full, I take it out. So I, have, I haven't even used two rolls of bags yet. Wow. Wow. I wish I could do that. <laughs> I don't use paper towels anymore. Good <laughs> boy. <laughs> Steve. I'm very positive about it. Also, are you saying that you're going to offer a third option that you're going to keep 1.3 and add a 1.5? After we find out the price increase for the stronger ones, we'll run through what we have of these and go with the stronger ones if the price we think is reasonable. Yeah. Aren't you concerned that, that people will be critical of that? You know, like if, because you know you're trying to convince people that. Well, I think I think the good thing about that is I think what we're here is and what we tried to say at the last meeting is it, it's up to all of you. It's up to the people of Waterville. I mean, we're here to, to tell you what's available, and we want to hear what people want. And I mean, that's, that's that's the beauty of it. So, do you have do, do either of you have a rough idea on the price differential? Do you have an idea? No. Okay. Not yet. I mean, there's a there are a lot of factors yeah. that would go there. Are a lot of factors. <laughs> okay. Those, yeah, but, yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll come right up front here in the back here. Yes. I have only one question. For those low incomes who's having hard times, <coughs> excuse me, uh, buying the button bags for ten dollars a month, it's kind of hard. Mm -hmm. How I mean, how's that gonna help us? Well, the food banks do have some bags, and we have some bags at City Hall in the general assistance department, so we can't give out bags if <coughs> people uh, are eligible. Yeah. Well, you don't have to buy more. It's just easier to just keep the way it was. Right. Well, actually, I, no, not right. Uh, yeah. um, it would be, would, it would be easy, perhaps easier in terms of the, the robotics of it, again, the mechanics of it, of just throwing your stuff away. Not easier uh, in that instantly we're talking about 
almost a two-thirds mill increase on the taxes. So it's just the way that it works out. So, uh, uh, I, yes, ma'am. Financially, what we were paying, say, last year with trash pickup in our taxes, how much have we saved personally in a year off our taxes buying these bags? Well, you didn't see a tax reduction. Oh. Uh, and I, uh, and I Why not? Hope, 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 hope for you to bomb. Essentially, over the course of several years, there were spending increases um, in the budget, as well as a major reduction in revenue sharing from the state, um, and as well as other factors that went to the school budget. So when the city looked at the budget, they said, well, one of our biggest items outside of police, uh, public fire. works, and fire was trash. And so either there could have been a tax increase to, to pay for the additional spending increases, and what the city said was, knowing that in 2018 we're going to have a dramatic, dramatic change uh, in the cost of our trash, which we're talking about tipping fees that could have potentially doubled. Um, to prevent that from happening, as well as to address the budget issues at the time, was to take the money that was previously being spent on the trash budget and move that over into other areas of the budget where the increases took place. And this was a new way for people to pay as they throw. Because you know, you're, you're, not, you're not paying for so the bag. That was the increase in taxes, the paying for the bag. She wants to know what the uh, what the cost of, of, the, of, of delivering the trash out, the bags versus. It's about four hundred thirty thousand dollars. Four hundred thirty thousand dollars for the city. So that that's that's more than half a mil. If your tax bill would have gone up. Not just my personal. No, everybody's. So. Taxes have increased though, right? Yes, they have. Right. I guess not because of tax. No. So our tax taxes increased tax increase because there was a reduction of revenue from the state. There was increased spending on behalf of the city, and we've been talking a lot about this, which had to do with bond spending as well as broad <coughs> salary and benefit increases. That, 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 I mean, that's how the budget worked. I mean, I, I can't take back what happened. That's a fact. So Spending went up. And half of the retirement for the teachers went into the city budget last year. That was a change from the, the state. state. Passed that on to the uh, city. That, that was a change from the state. So, uh, essentially, there's a there were spending increases on behalf of the city, and there were dramatic cuts coming from the state, and it's cost shift down to municipalities on both sides. Um, had to be dealt with somewhere, and I think the idea was particularly because of that. There's no avoiding the fact that in 2018, we need to figure out, we're in the process now of figuring out what we're going to do at that time, because we're talking about uh, almost a double of the cost of the disposal of our trash, and that has to do with forces outside of the city. Yes, sir. Uh, I just wanted to address that uh, being able to afford the bag thing, because I live on a fixed income. I use one small bag a week, and I recycle two large bins of recycling every two weeks. And a dollar and a quarter, I think anybody could afford a dollar and a quarter. I've seen a lot of people complaining about the bags that smoke cigarettes. So for two packs of cigarettes, you can buy a whole band bundle of bags. So I mean, it's just a matter of, of choice. It's not yeah, a matter of right. and think, Yeah, and I think the important thing is just to be straightforward and honest about it and say, and say there was multiple factors that went into it. There was spending increases on behalf of the city. There was major cuts coming from the state as far as revenues that, that we weren't paying before uh, that caused some of that spending increase. And uh, so regardless, uh, there was going to be some kind of tax increase, and this was probably the fairest way to do it and address a major problem at the same time. Uh, Mr. Carter. Yes, I'm Mr. Brown Carter from Ward 6. Um, I've been doing a bag swap with people and uh, swapping off for two trash bags because I didn't have the dumpster, but I still recycle. Um, and I've been collecting some bags, so I'm going to deliver that to the City Hall and hopefully some of the people that need some help you can get those bags. And I'm also collecting bins as well. So if anyone has an extra bin and they can let me know about it or see me afterwards, I'm collecting them and I'm also giving them out. Because I found a lot of people are paying more for the bags because they just didn't have a bin or didn't know where to go to get the bin. 
And so I made sure that they got the bin and they're saving some money there. And I think that has really helped. So if anyone wants to see me afterwards, um, please feel free to talk to me. Right. And one of the, and we'll get to your question next, one of the things too I think that we've seen is uh, at the last meeting there was a major kind of outcry of looking for more materials and what you can and can't recycle. And I can speak from personal experience that if you know what you can recycle, um, my trash is a lot more work than it used to be. Do I like that? No. However, I fill two or three large trash cans full of recycling, and I have a family of six with two in diapers, and I fill one bag a week. Um, so I think when I see people that have, you know, in front of one house have six bags, and sometimes they're not even full, I think that's where we're working to do a better job, and we have brought in EcoMade to help us out with that, to really get the message out of how to, individuals can make this work a little bit better for them and their families. And that's the last topic for tonight. It is. That's what said is going to help us with this. Yes, sir. How many households is there in the city of Waterloo estimated? I believe there are about 3,000 households. That includes, like, if there's a two-family apartment, you would count that as two? Correct. Yeah, I, I hope I'm not being too far off on that. Yeah. What we don't know. What would your educated guess be on how many of those households probably might might have a problem with paying that ten dollars? Just a guess. Well, that is hard to answer. Right. Because I'd have to know if our, our general assistance office, welfare office, right, how many bags they provided to people, right, what kind of experience the food banks have had, and I don't really know that, Larry. So it's yeah. it's hard for me to to say that. And what was the bin that he was talking about? Uh, I meant that uh, some people had not uh, gotten a bin. I know oh, some people that are like disabled, they're, they're more stuck in their home, they can't get out, don't have the help, so I've, I've been getting bins. And, you know, one thought I have, I mean, that's one of the things I thought a lot of people might say, they're for the recycling, they're for the pay as you throw, but they find it a little bit difficult buying the bag. Could you make that like a... a a bit, you know, like a floating scale for some people. I mean, one of my concerns would be you give people a bag, a roll of ten for almost nothing. You know, they might <clears throat> they might sell them to buy cigarettes or alcohol. Oh, yeah, I don't well, think nobody's ever, perfect. I don't think we ever give out a whole roll. So, but again, if if you if you did have some sort of floating scale and whether it's worth, I mean, you're saving a lot of money, which is good. I'm all for that. So if people were buying a bag, like a roll, I mean, if somebody would coordinate that and, and you could pay somebody who either has to volunteer services for whatever reason, that they would keep track of buying these bags, then you'd say, hey, you just bought 10 two days ago. You're doing something with them. You know what I'm saying? It seems though we could put a little money into something like that and sell the bags for almost nothing for people who can't afford it. We, we never give out more than one or two at a time. Right. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying. Yeah. We make we ask people to come back if they still need them. Right. Gentlemen, hi, Dylan's here. So I just uh, recently went back in town and I bought a house, and um, so I'm trying to get on board. And I'm only primarily learned here. So I went down to go pick up a recycling bin, but you guys didn't have any to supply the rest of the citizen area of the town. Um, but I can buy my own trash bag. And of course, taxes have gone up. So it's kind of hard for someone that's just coming to town, seeing that it's almost a failed policy to kind of let the citizen area start paying for their trash bags. So I was just curious if there was any thought in the process on where the money can be made up, considering the circumstances that you talked about earlier. Well, actually, taxes didn't go up last year, but they did go up in uh, the years prior to that. And this, what, I think the morning temple's done a great job at really outlining what's going on right now in the budget process. It's a tough process. And what I found is no matter how much I beg and plead people to show up and get involved, and, or at least if you talk to your city councilor, I mean, really, your city councilor, do you know what board you're in? Two. Or two, so that would be Nathaniel. Correct. Nathaniel White is your city councilor, and, and they want to hear from you. They need to hear from you because I want the pressure to say we don't want taxes to go up. Uh, and nobody wants taxes to go up, but it's it's very difficult, and we do need to make tough decisions. Um, but the reality is, right now, 
we just came up with about $600,000. The school is still working on what they can come up with. Um, the reality is to come up with another $400,000 to, to reduce the budget. Um, and even at that, there'll be an increase. I, I would love for you to look at the spreadsheet. I mean, the information is available. We can get it through you. We're open to outside. Of, uh, you know, we, we want citizen input, but um, I personally don't see where we can slash another four hundred thousand. Um, but we're still working on making as much as we can. Look in this direction sometime. <laughs> 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 Not that it really matters, but I'm moving forward. I'm part of the South Bend Neighbor Association. I've been driving around looking at problems, and there are some houses down there with 10 or 15 bags out front. Maybe those people can't afford a bag. Maybe someone should go ask them. Just a bit out of the house. Because they're going to start, they're going to start uh, uh, attracting rats and living. Maybe these are people who can't afford it because the bags are stacked up eight or ten times. There are some of us volunteering to pick up the bags. There, if you know some people that you'd like to let me know, I'd be glad to help and make sure we can at least catch them up a bit. There are, but I want to be clear about some of this too. Because um, I've been a pretty big advocate on this. Uh, we've actually we've had some recent very good success through code enforcement, through our code enforcement office, at getting some of those yards cleaned up. Um, because the reality is, it is not the city's responsibility to if people are throwing trash on their front lawns. That is the responsibility of the people who live in those places. And that's where we are trying to address that issue through code enforcement to hold the people who are actually responsible for throwing trash out there. Uh, yeah. I mean, that, yeah, I mean, I mean that, that's the reality. That's, I mean, Go down the walk with you. <laughs> Yep, we can. Yeah, I mean, people need to be responsible for their own behavior. Well, I would say that I would hope that the South End Neighborhood Association would actually go and, uh, and talk to those people and educate them about what can be recycled and what can. But I also wanted to say that you don't have to have a city sponsored recyclable recyclable bin. You can write recycle on any garbage can that you have and put it out of the uh, at the car. The city bins and, are all the You don't have to have a city recycle. They have a sticker. You can just go get it. You called me, thank you. Yes. Okay, um, I am Patricia Heath, the 44 Uses Parkway Board too. Um, I need I need to address PAYT as well, and I'm going to keep it really brief, but it's going to cover every question that you have here in a nutshell. And uh, still, many people are opposed to discussions prior to this time last year when PAT was implemented. Obviously, we're not enough uh, because. The education on the PAYT and the recycling that goes along with it, by the way, most people are happily recycling and still of us want to do more, um, are especially the homeowners and the taxpayers, which we stand at approximately 19% homeowners and taxpayers. That's from the information that I got at the meeting last night. It's on Info Water Bill, if you want to break it down. And we're all diligently trying to find ways to cut these costs. That way, some of the people that cannot afford the bags, by the way, where do they get these free bags? Is it coming out of my purse? Mm -hmm. Just asking. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just want to know why we should try so hard as 19% when we're already paying so many bills for the tax, <coughs> when the MPOs and the renters don't pay more or care more. But obviously, the people in this room care more because they're here. Thank you. And I'm going to give a big shout out to. Uh, the uh, people who, the code enforcement, because um, my long story on uh, veterans court, I've heard about that, and bravo, bravo. So yes, we need more of that. Um, I'm going to save the rest of this, so we need it, but I want to thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. And, and actually, one thing that this does address, uh, because you, is it, is it more, four plus units need a dumpster anyway? They have their own average? More than four. Anyone who has a building uh, that has more than four units has to pay. They have to pay for their own private trash hauling well anyway. They were never taking public trash. That's it. Um, however, renters before um, who were not paying the property taxes were taking advantage of the city's trash pickup. In this case, for units four or more, the renters actually do have to pay for their trash because they have to buy the bags because the city's not now 
subsidizing the homeowner. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, um, I, um, I live in Ward 2, and I've lived in the same house for over, four, uh, over 45 years. And I recycle, I started way back when, in 1980 or whatever, 1990, you know, when we started it. Mm -hmm. And I kept it up. I kept taking my stuff over to the building next to the next UPS. When that closed, I went over to straight on site. I'm a recycler. I do it. I put out two to three bins every other week. I get that part. I get that part of it. The part of it I don't get is I have to pay for those bags. I pay over six thousand dollars in taxes, oh. and I have to pay for those bags. Why? Why do I have to do that? I think this is totally ridiculous. Second. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> the silent majority. I will vote to rescind this June 9th. I will tell all my friends and neighbors, vote to rescind this. Sweetie, we're on the same street. You're one of the 19%. Yeah, <laughs> I'm on Johnson. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what I don't get is, maybe what we could do is, can we have one bag free every week? At least one bag? I think, I think that that would help. But I think this whole idea is full of kappa, and that's what you're going for. <laughs> well, the reality is, um, and everyone knows, I was the biggest advocate against Bayes Um However, right now, as we're trying our best to have not a tax increase this year, which is extremely difficult when I'm looking at the built-in spending increases. Um, this, if this goes away, automatically that's an extra $400,000 that the city needs to come up with that's either going to go into your property taxes, um, or we can get rid of trash altogether and we can privatize it. This and is a tax, though. It is a tax. And I'd like to see you guarantee that the price of those will never, ever, ever go up. Because they will. If they grow in product, it will go up. But it's a tax that goes to everybody who throws that garbage. Right, you're, paying, you're not paying for the bag. You're actually paying for the tipping fee. And it actually doesn't even cover the full cost of the tipping fee of the trash. You're, you're paying for what's inside the bag. I mean, before, hey, if you throw, you okay. and me, who pay property taxes, were subsidizing every single renter in the city of Water. Okay. Renters weren't paying, property tax bills were there. That's where the cost of trash is in the property That's tax bill. So now, no, no, no. now, renters, <laughs> now renters are paying for their own trash. Uh -huh. no. I used to be able to throw trash away in these great big kitty litter and cat food bags. Now I have to put those, I have to roll or fold them up and put them in the plastic. To me, that's a big waste. I had to take an old dead Christmas tree wreath and put in a plastic bag. To me, that's a waste. Well, How do I get rid of an old room and a, you know, and a shovel? We're getting to that next. Sure. I will well, tell you. Well, you didn't get all the nuts and bolts taken out of the deal before you started it. Sure. Well, uh, that's true. Uh, but I will tell you that I will be personally voting to keep Pays You Grow because the reality is. You didn't run on that platform. No, you don't. Uh, <laughs> the reality is, <laughs> I don't. Let me ask, would you be okay with the, you're just paying it through your property tax and adding an extra $430,000 back to the budget? I guess that's the question that we all need to ask. Give the real number $100,000 home increase is $50. $50. $100,000 home would be the increase that we were told last year on video. Am I incorrect? I have no idea what you're talking yeah. about. We were, we, I asked last year what the increase would be on the mill rate if we had Paisley Pro excluded and we did not have it. And I was told on a hundred thousand dollar home would be about fifty dollars. Is that a lot of money? I don't think so. And I wonder how many in here that support this are under the poverty line and how many are above it. I'm not gonna ask you to raise your hands because I wouldn't want anyone to do it. Well, the reality is that we estimated about three hundred thousand last year. So that was the estimate. Correct which would have been about half a mil, which would have been $50. Thank you. And that's the question people need to answer. That's we can, we can, it's, it's now $430,000 because we had about 10% more participation than we thought we were going to have. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, that's the choice. We can add it back to the budget, and that's, that money is now going to be back as part of the mill rate. Or this will be basically, yes, ma'am. 
I guess a part of all of this is you wonder what is the tax base because it does seem to go up. My heart goes out with you because I pay seven thousand dollars a year. It is my city council. I'm very upset and I am for recycling. But when I went down to City Hall to ask questions about the program before it was implemented, okay, they couldn't even be answered. So a program was implemented that the people at City Hall couldn't even answer the questions to. And then they went out back and they got someone else and then they got someone else and then I got angry and then so they went and got somebody else. I will vote against it too on the premise that it was not in front of the people before it was implemented and what other program will be implemented before it goes out to the people. My tax have gone up to 7000 I know what I know how you feel. You're right in the four. The rollout was to make those faces. And you know, it's sad. That. Instead, we, I talked to you about this. I love my neighbor, Sid, who's my counselor. But my husband and I, I am forcing him to stay in the city of Waterville right now. We're small business owners in Oakland. I have not bought a purple bag. On the premise, number one, the treatment I got when I went down to find out about the program, is then them not being able to answer the question. So I'm for recycling. But the way the city went about doing it, I think it's wrong, so I have to stand on my principles of what's going to happen next. What will happen? Will the bags go up? What will be the price of those bags when they go up? Now, I'm for recycling. I'm not against recycling. But I have to go back to the fact of the way it was implemented. It really angered a lot of people. I realize a lot of people have changed their mind on this program. But there are us that maybe think that this program is fine. But the way that is just pulling the rug under the under, under the feet of the people who, who pay a lot of taxes in this city that doesn't offer a whole lot anymore. You're, you're right, and I. Yeah, I'm just right. 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 We are looking. We are looking to move on the city of Waterloo. That's only seven thousand dollars a year, but someone else. It is a lot of money, and I and I hear you, and I apologize for the feeling. And I'll be honest, I you don't need. First of all. There is no judgment here, so you do not need to feel like you need to justify your position. I think that needs to be clear for anybody. This is what an open forum is about. Um, you, sure, you certainly shouldn't feel any judgment on that. Uh, I have not, to be honest, I haven't changed my feelings about how I like the program. I've changed my feelings on, I'm looking at the budget and looking at all of the other increases. I'm right now working on trying to hammer down as much as I can and saying, how is this going to affect, affect all the other homeowners if this gets added back? Um, but you can so. understand the concerns of certain I absolutely. When I'm one of them. When you're talking, okay, when you're talking about the budget issues, mm -hmm. what then is going to come up for possibly another increase in taxes that might be pushed through without the input of the taxpayer? Set aside, I know this is about pay as you No, no, no. So it I just shouldn't go off of the subject of pay as you That's that's my concern. And it has been for a very long time. Sure, and I think, you know, fortunately I I mean so I've been to your house and I know you work with Sydney and, and he lives right next door. Um, I wish everybody would call their counselors and have discussions about the budget because that's how counselors come to make their decisions about the budget. It's, it's probably different. It's, <laughs> he loves it. No, it, it's extremely important that you do engage and talk to your counselor because, um, and I'm not going to go back to the rollout because I was the biggest blaster of the rollout. And it is what it is for me at this point. I, you know, I'm obviously here dealing with a different situation, but. Your opinion is respected, you don't need right. to justify it. I just know other um, citizens also have to do, and I know you say you can't go back to the rollout and how it's implemented and whatnot, but it is going to affect the vote of, of um, certain people um, on June 9th, which most people don't even realize 
I work in a small business. I am trying to make them all aware. They go, what do you mean June 9? Well, I go, that's a good question. Why June 9? Why a time when we're not voting on anything else but To be honest with you, crowds? actually, um, there was a lot of, at the, the meetings at the city council, there was a lot of push uh, from us who were there against it to get it in December and not on a November vote, I believe, mm -hmm. how you call it. Yeah. Um, because we, I think it was had to be a little bit of a residence here in town. Steve, you can I you, sir. Can I just remind people that before we bought the purple bags, um, remember that you used to go to Shaw's and get it and buy the brown ones. So, I mean, for those people that are saying they can't afford the purple bags, you're still going to have, if you do away with pay as you throw, you're going to be going back to Hanford and spending $10 to buy a box of the brown ones. So, I mean, it's not like, or you go to buy a trash can that's 20 bucks, which would be about a half a year's worth of the purple bags. So, I don't see what the, what the issue is with that. I mean, and again, I try to understand everybody's plight, but you have to have a bag. Because right, so if you do the recycling, it actually, it, I think the point you're saying is you, use, you end up using less bags in the cost of it. I, I mean, but one way or another, you're going to be buying bags. I don't use the bag. I did go to a private server and some people may say, well, you're paying just as much there. But I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, it's a local business. And they don't need to apologize. We own a small business, my family does, and so we're giving our money towards the small business. Like I said, unfortunately, as much as I hate to say that, I'm, I'm literally forcing my husband to stay in Waterville right now. And I promise you, we are obviously you live next door to Sydney, so you're pretty tuned in. We're doing our best to work on the tax issue here. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Todd. I live over on Chelsea Place. Uh, I'm pretty new to town. Uh, I moved here from Gardner, which uh, and from and from Portland, which has pays and throw and recycling uh, and. One of the big factors for me moving to Waterville was I wanted to make sure there was curbside recycling. But I heard, <coughs> that, the city but I heard that the city council was considering doing it, so I went to every city council meeting, talked to my city councilor Dana, uh, and was really pleased that the city was considering doing this. So, uh, and I think that the process that the city went through was actually pretty good. I mean, they had a, a, a committee that was put together. They looked at this for over a year. I mean, there's some people in the room who, who were on that committee. Uh, they reported back to the city hall. So. I think that the process is actually pretty good. It's just a matter of paying attention to what's happening in City Hall. Uh, and you can't argue with, you know, you might support this program, you might hate it. You can't argue with the numbers. 53% reduction in trash tonnage, that's eight tons less a day. That's incredible. I mean, $60 a ton to dispose of your waste is really expensive. It's gonna double in 2018. So the fact that we're already sending 50% less trash is amazing. And the recycling rate has gone from like 5% to 30%. Yeah, I'm it's one that you didn't have a choice. You don't have a choice. You have a choice. You can get a private contractor. Yeah, well, well, thank you. you have your choice. So, 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 choice. so if you're not throwing the trash away, where's my, where's my $400,000 saving to the budget? Where's my savings? Hey, uh, to address that, that came from a mixture, a, a mixture of state cuts as well as we need to acknowledge increases in the city spending. You, you have to acknowledge all sides of the budget. It's, it's, it's not just, it's, it wasn't just one thing. There was cuts from the state, there was spending increases, and those increases are things, some of those have to do with contracts that we're still trying to address right now. We've been paying attention to the budget process. Um, it's, there, there was a lot of things, but that, that's why. I mean, that, there's no going around the fact that the budget was increased, and, uh, and and that's why your taxes didn't go down. Well, if we look, what, what are we getting for our taxes? Less services. What are we getting for our taxes? You're getting, you're, we're paying for a full-time police force, we're paying for a full-time fire department, we're paying to have our roads plowed and cleaned, um, we're paying to we're, yep, we're paying for the school for sure. Um, the school, the school budget is now. It's a little more complicated because the, the city doesn't pay for the entire school budget, but it's still a big chunk of the budget that the city pays for. So I hear your plight. I'm not, you know, and we are working on it. Um, and you're not the only one. Just but you're not the one. But 
And if you're if we're looking at mill rate, getting rid of basic throw just adds the mill rate back. So, nobody's upset regardless. I'm not anyway. Um, Councilor Boucher. Um, I just wanted to uh, say that um, typically the budget would have been voted on by now. We would have we would have voted. I think probably it, it would have been voted probably last night. You know, it takes three votes. But you have a new council now, almost. You have a new mayor, and we are going through this budget probably more strategically and more as a group. And there's a lot of us that have very different views and are coming at it very different ways. And all of us are kind of coming to the same um, the, the same aspect is that none of us want to raise taxes. None of us want, I'm a single mom, I own a home in Waterville. I'm paying a lot of taxes that is difficult. I don't want anybody to pay more taxes at all. Um, when I looked at us paying seven, when I started on the council, we were paying almost seven hundred thousand dollars to pick up trash and going to the school and asking them to lower the school budget and cutting a police officer in the South End and looking at the fire department and looking at it was it was very clear to me that we need to spend our money in a way that cleans up our community, makes our community safer, makes our schools stronger. And uh, the mayor and I are meeting with the superintendent on Thursday to go through their budget and see where we can pass there. Um, we are doing the best that we possibly can. Um, in my opinion, though, I don't want our tax money to go and pick up trash. I just don't think that is a proper way when I'm going to the superintendent and asking him to cut the school budget. And there's lots of ways that we, we are cutting, and I know that we're all at the table working really, really hard. So I just want to, to let you guys know that. This is not something that, um, at least for myself, and I know many other counselors, and I'm pretty sure the entire council threw on as a, an easy fix. Um, it was really, really looked at. I do agree the rollout didn't go very well. Um, I was a city councilor, or the new city councilor at the time, and I didn't have the answer to give people, and I was a city councilor. Um, I will say, though, when you bring in a new program as huge that's dealing with 15,000 people in days a week and public works and, and different, it's a very difficult program. So we did know that there were going to be kinks, and one of the biggest kinks we realized was picking up twice a month, recycling. That doesn't make sense. Because if we're asking you to do occasion throw, we should make recycling as easy as possible. And that's what we're doing. We're going back to the table and we're figuring out how much money we're going to have to spend and renegotiate our contract to make that happen. But so I just I just want to say like I feel kind of the same feelings that you're having. Um, but also looking at the budget, and I invite all of you to come to our budget meetings and come and sit um, and, and really look at the numbers that they've taught me, right? I think when you start to look at the numbers. $700,000 for me when I'm sending my kids to public schools and we're asking them to cut things, but I'm willing to pick up trash. I'm willing to spend the $2 a week to put my trash out and be able to get curbside recycling so I just make sure that our police force and our schools are stronger and make sure that tax money is going in. So, um, anyways, I just wanted to... And I actually just wanted to bring up, just for the sake of making sure we're staying on track here, um, a couple of things. One, whether you are for pays you throw or against it, this meeting is uh, should be respectful of all views. And there's no judgment from anybody. And so, for anybody that speaks, I want to make sure that our tones are civil, and because that's there needs to be a respect for everybody and on, on both sides. That's that's very important. Um, reality is, we are going to vote on this in June, um, and that vote is going to take place. We do want to make sure the meeting was really to address these issues that came out of the last meeting. Mr. Carter, you were there, um, and actually started. So so, and, a, and actually, you started the support page. You throw a Facebook yep. page after that, so we appreciated that. Um, but we're going to have a couple more quick comments, and then we do want to move on to what everybody had asked for at the last meeting, which was the recycling education. So, so spoke of me and said I could come. Um, I am going to say. We're going to take, I've seen a couple hands up for a while. I want to get to those and 
again, just want to make sure your answers are respectful to all members here. And, uh, and then we'll get a chance for the people at the end of that as well. I have a question, not, not a comment. Yeah. I guess it might be more comforting to me as a taxpayer to know. Is the taxpayer base in the city of Waterville growing? No. Okay. Well, I, I say that. I'd say we are maintaining. Right now, we are maintaining. Stable. Um, and that is actually, a, I'm sure, living next door to Sydney. Uh, you probably get the gist that one of the major things we're working on is how do we start making the city uh, more attractive to other people to get them here, and one of the major factors is taxes that we're trying to address. That would right eliminate now. a lot of these issues. Because, and, and taxes are an issue, we've been, I'm sure you've been following along, it's one of the major things we've been talking about is, is how that affects uh, homeowners and decisions. There's, no, there's no doubt about there it. Would they get for price for a private I think CMD to do the entire city water. Like, they ever? Did we, we did. Yeah, we, we fitted out all the trash collection, you mean? Yeah. So yeah. last year they had three different bids from private contractors? Right, correct. And the, uh, the lowest of the three private bids was about $20,000 higher than what we estimated it cost the city. So we stuck with the city pickup. It was a little bit cheaper. I think there will come a time, though, when we will seriously think about the, right, contracting out trash pickup. No, I mean one of the one of the side effects that we talked about it. I'm, I'm not a big I'm a kind of anti government guy myself, but <laughs> it, the lady down there said said it very well. She had conditioned herself to it's how she buys. But I guess what bugs me is that it took government oversight to teach us how to recycle and rebin. I mean, some people were very good at it anyway. And, yeah, but. Uh, but I just, you know, it's like, it's like a seatbelt, like, oh, great. I just don't want to be told I have to do it. It's, it's a great thing, no question, but you just don't want to be told you have to do it. That's all. That's, it's against, against, against my parents, too. Get that, you know. yeah. <laughs> I'm on a motorcycle helmet. Right, a right. motorcycle helmet. No, no, you're right, you're right. That's identical. Right. That's, that's right. All right, so I'm going to, uh, we have four hands up here, and I'm going to go to you in sequential order, and then we're going to move on so we can... Um, get to the recycling piece that, that a lot of people are looking for as well. Yes, sir. So, I was curious, sort of about the nuts and bolts, as, as far as the economic standpoint on all this. You guys say you had uh, a bid for five, three different companies. That lowest one, the company, just briefly, just, what was that company? Uh, I think the lowest bidder was, was it Casella? Casella's was the lowest. Casella bid, waste management, those are two huge Waste management. Now, we're, is that where you guys were dumping prior to when the city was doing it? No, we, we've been, uh, our trash for the last uh, 26, 7 years goes to Orrington to a, an incinerator. Okay. So our trash is burned at an incinerator that produces <coughs> electricity. During, during the 7 year? Uh, last 27. Year. 27. Yeah. Okay, so during that time, was there any other sort of bid process to get rid of this trash elsewhere via waste management or another outfit? When Paul Page became mayor, he asked me to conduct a bidding process, and we did it back then, which would have been eight years ago, approximately. And we found back then, actually, the spread was even higher between what it's cost in the city and what it would have cost us to bid it out. And one of the problems now is that uh, that long-term contract with PERC is ending, and they're saying those rates are going to double because their model has not been sustainable, apparently. So that, that's kind of in 2018. That's one. That's one of the, the whole, major kind of the whole the picture road. changes when we no longer are required to bring our trash to Perk. Right? But better than the but, Well, we don't. The city actually just appointed a solid waste committee, um, and there are engineers on this. There are city councilors on this. Um, there's a lot of good variety of folks. Mr. Silverstein's on the committee, um, and the, the purpose of that is trying to figure out. Yes, what, the be, what, it, what is going to be the best array of options that we have. So we're actually trying to think about that now because realistically the city will probably have to vote on that. About a year from now, about a year from now, in 2016. To get set up for 2018. So it is definitely, that, that's kind of what's where we are now with that longer term. You know, that's going to happen then. Very, very important question. Well, um, you know, jumping back to that first question I had for you. Yeah. 
Is there a contingency plan as far as, you know, this room, you know, the statistics speak for itself. So if the uh, town goes and, and gets rid of this type of throw, what do you guys have up your sleeve to make the, the gap, uh, you know, feasible? And then, not only with that being said, and there's some business owners here. Um, and I, yeah, I want to first say that I don't think anyone is questioning anyone else's discernment on, on doing the right thing to, to recycle. I think mean, everyone wants to recycle. I don't think there's a judgment on that, so I'm trying to say. Sure. So, I don't forget this. <laughs> so um, in any case, I was just kind of curious on, um, you know, moving forward and, and figuring out what what's down the pipeline, considering, you know, you see the numbers here every time. Sure. Well, about a month ago we had a meeting, and it was actually more full than this, and the statistics there were exactly the opposite. So, I don't, to be honest, if you were to pull me right now, I can't give you a thermometer of where I think the vote's going to go. Um, ultimately, it's going to go however people show up to vote and vote. Um, we've talked about this at budget meetings, and right now, um, because we are looking at the greater budget, we realize that here's going to be an additional $400,000 for the city to come up with, um, where we have all these other salary and benefit increases that are built in, um, the bond spending built in, and we are trying right now to make as many cuts as we can. Um, realistically, do I think that we could get you to a, get to cut another $400,000 we're already trying to cut? Right, we started at one and a half million, we're now down close to a million, we're still talking to the school, we're trying to whittle these down. Um, this just kind of hits a re somewhat of a reset button. To, how do we, we can't, we can't cut it all, or else, I mean, what we could, you'll just have no service. There, there will literally be nothing left. Um, that, that just comes down to start, you know, firing bodies. Um, then that, that's the only thing left is eliminating departments. Possibility, right? At least that might be on the table. But we can eliminate trash and you can bake your burger all. Well, in any case, um, yeah. you know. I don't say that to be. No, 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 no. Yeah. I know. I'm, you're not being facetious. No, no. So, uh, in any case, the private, private um, businesses, um, I was curious if you had heard of any sort of uh, riffraff on, on the idea that people can't afford perhaps bags. Um, in any case, I've seen it in my neck of the woods where people will have a bin that they rent by a issues or whatever it is, and they're, they're getting loaded up. So now it becomes another tax burden on uh, the local business and, and the local community. So we had, we had to put a lock on ours. Right. People were getting it up. Yeah. I, 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 I put it on without a lock. It wasn't even a week later, and the dumpster was full. And it was reported um, to the police because someone was seen there late at night. Putting trash bags so, in, we bought a lot. Yeah, it did. It, I would say there was a higher increase to that when it first started. Um, I know the city has been in contact with business owners who have called the city. Um, Lots re regardless of what we do with anything, there's going to be a certain amount of riffraff with a variety of issues, whether it's trash or, 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 or any other issue. Um, so, perhaps last question for me. Sir. Um, the, the recycling <coughs> program, I remember. Uh, Years ago, when I was a, a lot younger, <clears throat> Waterville tried to do a recycling program, and they they got bins for everyone, and everyone had two. And uh, in any case, you guys sent out uh, the city that is sent out recycling trucks that were very costly at the time that they picked up, and they ran it once a week. Instead of buying maybe one truck, they bought two and ran it once a week. Instead of buying you know maybe just one truck running it like twice a week. Um, I think it stands, stands for itself, excuse me, that it didn't work out economically speaking. It's, it's just, it wasn't feasible to buy two trucks and run them once a week. Um, I was curious if we were making money off the recycling at this point, and if that was the plan to begin with. Um, I, I uh, and I can't speak to whatever happened years ago. Sure, I was just uh, kidding. But, but, but saving money, but not making Right. Right. We're saving money. We're, I guess we're we're reducing making, expenses. We're, we're, we're making up a deficit. Uh, it's a, um, we're yeah, reducing we're, we're trash, reducing expenditures. Uh, it's, I don't think it's ever going to turn into uh, a business for the city to, to be in the recycling. The purpose really isn't to, uh, at least from my standpoint, there are people who you know obviously love the recycling. 
uh, from my standpoint, the purpose is uh, merely a financial one. Of how do we reduce the tonnage as much as possible? And we, we've done that by 55%, so that's where, the, that's where we realize the same. Where are disposable diapers being why are you going? Why you going in the trash? I have two children in diapers. Yeah, I just, I'm yeah. Totally and actually, I would say uh, that's probably half of what goes in my one bag a week is probably diapers. <laughs> <laughs> and one of them's a toddler, so. Um, um, I did promise I would get to these three questions back here, and then we wrap it up. Yes, we see. Oh, thank you. Yes. Okay. I wanted to say thank you for those questions too. I, I take them not lightly as well. Um, Kirk, uh, I believe I heard it mentioned recently their contract is coming up again soon. Well, you know they're not going to go down. If they're going to have anything to do with us, they are going to go up. Um, and I, I do have a potential solution that should at least be tossing the table before we get Kirk short rating the city of Waterville and then we all end up paying for that too. Um, because they will and will short rate. But we're looking at something called composting. City city of Winslow actually has a successful composting program going on. That's a lot of your smelly waste is in the garbage can that doesn't go into recycling. And I, I'd like to see a committee or a volunteer committee or someone on that. That might be that one bag a week. And if so, some of these points are moved. I mean, it's just something to think about. Then, because we don't expect her, her to be nice to us no matter what we do. There certainly are more solutions. There are, and actually, if you if you have a solution like that, I would recommend that you forward that. Um, actually, if you forward it to Mike, he can forward that to the Solid Waste Committee, because that is the, the job of the Solid Waste Committee that we just appointed. I used to be in Solid Waste. Yes. Exactly. Yes. So, if you could get in contact with Mike, I'm sure the Solid Waste Committee will look at whatever other options that you have. Will do. Mr. Carter, I apologize for the wait. You are next, and then we have one more question after you, sir. Um, Brian Carter from Ward 6 again. Um, I just want to say thank you very much for taking the heat, um, because you, are, right. you right. weren't there last year when this got voted in, and I know a lot of us are upset because this was imposed upon us, but Nick's up here, and he is being honest. Every time we ask him, he's honest, and that's what I can really look for in a leader, is that honesty, so I really appreciate that. But in Thank you. Um, but in, in, in conjunction with this, I don't feel last year that there was an honest discussion which was in a finance meeting and was discussed. And when that was stated, someone had responded and said, oh, I don't really like the idea of you saying we are we're dishonest. Well, I think some people weren't fully forthcoming last year. Now with it being forthcoming and people having been honest, yes, I've come on board with it because I see our budget needs it. We need this to keep going in the city. I don't like PAC throw. I don't even love it. I like recycling. I love recycling, it's a great thing. But we do need this for our budget, and we do need to have an honest discussion. And those that had a dishonest discussion last year, shame on you. Um, I do want to say, uh, you know I keep harping on this, your city councilors are real people. I see Rosemary in the back there. These are real, they're real people, uh, they're your friends, they're your neighbors. They take your calls, they take your emails. Um, Let's say he's no names. Please. please. <laughs> you know, in, engage in the process because we do. I mean, this is these are the things we're trying to do. So the next and last question, sir, before you move. First of all, I do want to say that I'd like to commend the people who did recycling before the pay you throw. I'll be honest with you, I was one who would just throw stuff away. Okay, and there was your trash, right? There, there was your 80, 80, 000, 90, 000, 90, I mean, 89 tons, correct, a, mo a month, which is on this chart. Okay. However, I do believe that if we give bags away, people are going to take the easy way out and throw stuff away. Mm -hmm. I'm probably going to be right there. I hate to admit it. Hopefully, I wouldn't. I, I see a big plus in recycle. I see. I see. The biggest problem with recycle for me is the plastic, the cans, the, the pizza boxes. They pile up quickly. I think it's good that you're going to go every two weeks. Thank you. I mean, are you talking about alternating every every other week, yep. 26 instead of 24 a year? Yes. Okay. So yes, thank you for that. Um, so a lot of people don't know that your public works has a dumpster for brush, Christmas wreaths, mm -hmm. stuff like that. So you don't have to throw that away in the trash. You know, a broom, a wooden broomstick from a handle. You know, I got an idea that that can go in those dumpsters. So you don't have to throw that away. But people don't know that. 
I mean, I think you do that twice a year, is that correct? Spring and fall? Three months in the spring. And I think it's still the middle of June currently. Okay, so I think that's a big plus for us to get rid of brush and branches and, and stuff like that. Um, Mike, I do have to say that I'm not sure I agree with what you said as far as rent is not throwing away trash for free because taxes are still paid on the apartment they live in. So I'm not sure I agree with that statement. Well, when so renters started to buy bags, did anybody's rent go down? I don't think so. No, I understand that. But if so the I taxes don't... went up because we're paying more for trash, the chances are the rent would go up a little bit. Here, here. So. Awesome. That, I mean, that's just my point. Yeah. One thing I've never understood is why the businesses in town haven't been the biggest cheerleaders for paying for throw. Because any business in town is paying twice for trash disposal. Right. Once in their property tax bill, and second when they have to contract out to have somebody come and get it. Wasn't us, that us homeowners were paying just once right. in our property tax bill, but we were making every business in the city of Waterville pay twice in their property tax right. bill and by hiring their own contract. Now, that burden in the property tax bill has been cut drastically with pay as you throw. So businesses are not being hit twice like they were. Right, so that's probably... I, I haven't understood why businesses haven't been saying, yes, we'd like to do it. But we should probably get to Lissa's presentation. Because I think the uh, questions that came out of the last meeting what can I recycle and what can I? And so she's got a good presentation about the basic do's and don'ts. I, I know I learned some things when I started thinking about what actually can go in the recycling bin and what can. All right. Thank you, Mike. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Lisa Bitterman. I'm the business development manager at EcoMain, and we are the company located down in Portland who processes your single stream recyclables. Um, I came tonight with a kind of quick and dirty presentation about the do's and don'ts, um, but a couple of issues have come up that I just want to speak to because I think as kind of one of the solid waste experts in the room that I might be able to shed some light on some things that people have mentioned tonight as concerns, and then I'll get right to the do's and don'ts. Um, one of the things that um, we see at EcoMain, we have a single store recycling facility. We also have a waste to energy power plant similar to Park, where your solid waste goes. Um, that, uh, we process about 40,000 tons of single stream recycling a year from our 54 member communities. We process 182,000 tons of solid waste a year from those same communities. The EPA does a waste characterization study every few years, Environmental Protection Agency, and their waste characterization study comes up time and again with the statistic that about 50 to 60 percent of the material that comes out of households in the solid waste stream could have been recycled if people bothered to put it in the right container. So what that speaks to, unfortunately, is the distinction between the folks who've been recycling way before it was the cool thing to do, and the folks who, when an opportunity is handed to them on a silver platter, can't be bothered for one reason or another. This program kind of crosses that gap. Um, with that said, the city of Sanford um, is a community that's been with EcoMain for many, many years. Very quickly, they went to pay as you throw a number of years ago. Residents didn't like it. They put it on a referendum. They voted it out. In the four months that they had pay as you throw, we saw their solid waste go down by around 40%. When they put, when they rejected pay as you throw four, four months later and went back to their old system, didn't take them very long at all for the waste to creep back up to where it was before and higher. So unfortunately, it's like the seatbelt law, it's like the motorcycle helmet law, it's like the speeding limits. You know, we don't always necessarily like to have things imposed on us, but you've got your people on either end of the spectrum that are going to obey or disobey no matter what, and then everybody else in the middle kind of comes on board when there's a cost. Um, and so I think that what that does is it speaks to where we try to educate people, and EcoMain has a very strong education program um, I'm going to be at the farmer's market for the next three weeks. I was there last week with samples of all the do's and don'ts physically. If you want to come down, if you want to tell your friends, I'm going to be there from 1 o'clock until 6 o'clock in the afternoon uh, in the concourse with actual physical samples that you can get your hands on and look at and question. 
Um, <coughs> the way Eagle Maine educates is that we look at the population as a bell curve. Everything's on a bell curve in life, right? So you go like this, and then you go back down. On one end of the bell curve is what we would consider the motivated minority. It's about 15 to 20% of any population across this country will recycle at all costs. They will pay for it. They'll cart it themselves a mile uphill in the snow both ways, and they will do it because it's the right thing to do. On the other side, we have the exact same amount of folks who no matter how easy, you'll offer to take it for them. You'll come in their house, you'll sort it for them. It doesn't matter. You'll pay them to do it. it doesn't matter. They're going to do what they want with their solid waste, and that's just what they're going to do. And then everybody else falls in the middle, unmotivated majority. These are people who maybe just don't know, who maybe just haven't given it a lot of thought, who maybe need a little guilt, who maybe need a little incentive, who probably just need a little education, and that's why I'm here tonight. And I really hope that you can tell your friends and family, coworkers, etc., to take advantage of the upcoming education um, sessions that myself and my colleague will be doing. Um, I have posters here. They list all the education that's coming up. If you have a place of business or your local grocery store anywhere, if you'd like to take a couple and hang them up for your fellow residents, I can't get everywhere um, all in one time, but I'm going to be doing my best to put them up around the city. I also have um, for you to take a printout of this entire presentation and actually a section of it that I may not even get to, which is kind of like a virtual tour of our facility, but it's really rich with pictures and it should go a long way to helping to clear up any confusion. Those are at the door on your way out. And lastly, I have a packet here and it's a little packet about EcoMaine. It's a, in, inside it is another packet about how we actually sort out all these recyclables when they come to us in a big mishmash. And lastly is a list of do's and don'ts for your refrigerator. So um, please be sure to pick one of these up and take one for friends or family or anyone who couldn't make it. Um, the last thing I just want to say is, um, oh, in terms of recycling containers, you do not need to have an official water bill, recycle, eco main, blue bin. We will take the material in any way except for in garbage bags. So you can put it out at the curb in an old laundry basket, in a milk crate, in a cardboard box, they'll just take the whole thing and throw it right in. You can put it out in an old trash can, and Public Works actually has stickers, heavy duty all weather stickers that you can go and pick up that say water bill recycles, and they will turn any vessel you have in your home into a recycle bin. So I just really want to stress that you don't have to have one of those bins to participate in the program. Um, and I'm gonna, normally I like to take questions all the way through, but I think I'm going to ask if you can hold them because I may answer them as I go through, um, and at the end I'm going to be happy to take questions. So, um, this is, should we put the lights maybe so there's a little more contrast? Can you do that? Thank you. Yes, I think, does that help everyone? Yeah, yeah. okay, great. So this is how your recycling comes to us, okay? Big old mess. This is called our tipping floor. The recyclables get dumped out of compactor trucks. They get dumped out of open top containers. They get dropped, dumped out of tractor trailers. Any which way they get delivered to us, we will take them and we will separate them for you. Um, what we need in, the, in between when they come to us like this and when you put them out of the curve is a good understanding of what actually can go in and what can't. Um, this is a little poster that we have. It's actually on the home page of our website. You can go on and click on it and download it for free if you want to take, if you want to print it out, if you want to have it for your home. It's just a very quick and easy visual guide um, to, to show you uh, at a glance the kind of majority of the items that pass through your home that um, maybe if you have young kids, you can help them get used to the graphics and things like that if they're not reading yet. Um, this is a list, I'm not gonna go through the whole thing, but I wanted to include it because um, it's in your printed out version and um, we will be addressing all of these items in picture form as I go. So single stream recycling, you can mix it all together, right? So what are your paper dues? Essentially, all non-wax paper is recyclable as long as it's not totally filthy. Our motto is if you can tear it, we can recycle it. So any of these items up there are recyclable. The items that oftentimes people get confused about are the milk um, containers, uh, the cardboard ones, or the juice containers. 
A long time ago, they used to be wax coated. They aren't anymore. They're actually coated with a plastic polymer. You can always tell if something's wax coated by scratching your fingernail down, and if it comes up with some wax underneath, you know it's wax coated. If it doesn't, you can rest assured that it can go into your recycling. Another item down at the bottom, you see the soy milk and the wine box and the juice box. Those are considered aseptic containers. What those are, they allow perishables to sit on a shelf unrefrigerated. Those are fine, we can take them. And then all of these items here that you can see um, in terms of egg crates, newspaper, uh, magazines, phone books, regular books, both hard and soft cover. Um, the cereal boxes, cracker boxes, pasta boxes, we consider that all paperboard, those are fine. Um, paper towel and toilet paper tubes. Um, the glossies that come in your newspaper, junk mail, you don't have to take the window out, that can stay in, that'll get dealt with down the road. Um, and then lastly, um, we will also take shredded paper, we just need you to put it in a clear plastic bag so our guys on the line can see what it is. They will pull it out by hand and once the paper is sorted from everything else, they tear open the bag, they dump the shredded paper in and it goes into the bale and then off to market. Um, Paper do's, it's a really, I mean, sorry, paper don'ts, it's a small list. It's wax paper, toilet paper, Kleenex, and paper towel. The wax paper, the paper fibers and the wax are too ingrained with each other and they cannot be separated down the road. And all of the rest of the items there, they're, the fibers are tiny, tiny, tiny to make them soft enough for human contact. So when they try to recycle them, they just turn into mush when mixed with water. So you really can't pulp it down and turn it into a material that new paper can be made out of. That's pretty much it on the paper side, literally everything else. Even, you know, tea bag, um, pouches, again, if you can rip it, we can take it. In terms of metal dues, um, we need everything to be under a five gallon size, otherwise it gets jammed up in our sorting equipment. We have heavily um, automated sorting equipment and it is meant to accommodate household items, not big giant industrial containers. So we ask that everything be under five gallons. Um, and we can take steel, tin, or aluminum, including um, foil, including pie plates, in including the caps for off of all your bottles and cans, and as well, aerosol containers. We do ask that you can please empty those um, if you can possibly remember so that they don't explode when they're going through our plant. Um, in terms of cleanliness, all of the vessels that you're turning into your single store recycling just give them a rinse. Use up the product inside, give it a swish with some warm water, it's good. You do not need to put it in your dishwasher, you do not need to painstakingly clean it. It gets, it gets cleaned downstream by the vendors who actually purchase it. Um, these are single sort metal don'ts. All of these items are recyclable, just not in a single stream, uh, in single sort stream. Um, obviously, white metal that has Freon in it needs to go to the transfer station, the Freon needs to be taken out, and then our specialty recycle, recyclers will um, handle that material. And then other um, items that you can see in this um, container are, you know, jagged pipe, uh, bicycles, we get lawn mowers sometimes, um, items that are just too large to go through our starting equipment, those don't have a home in single sort. In terms of glass, again, five gallon size is the kind of the key size, anything five gallons or under. We take all colors of glass, you do not have to take the labels off, just empty them of their contents, give them a quick rinse, and you're fine. Caps on, caps off, doesn't matter, just throw it in. Um, in terms of glass don'ts, there aren't really that many, but those that there are are really important. Um, we cannot take building and car windows, mirrors, ceramics, or light bulbs of any kind, particularly the curly Q ones because they have mercury in them. Those need to go to a hardware store um, or any of the other businesses around uh, town that you know recycle CFL bulbs. And the rest of the material is a different kind of glass than what we take. It's also very jagged and can be dangerous for our workers, so we don't take any of those materials that you see up there. Um, Goodwill is a great place to take ceramics, even if they're broken, because if they can't be resold, they will um, sell it off to companies and they use it to make road and they put it in all kinds of stuff, they just grind it up and reuse it. Okay, now we get into like... What about the, uh, uh, the plates? They're not really ceramic and they're not really... We had one the other night when you dropped it, it shattered. Yeah, probably like a resin, some type of like a plastic resin. No, no, no. It, it felt like a, a normal dinner plate. Oh, 
Oh, they, they had a, have a name for them. They used to come in sets. Corral. Corral, yes. Glass. Yeah, those would not be recyclable. Those okay. would, yeah, basically you want to stick to the rule for glass of bottles and jars. The things that are going to come through your household that have product in them. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Okay, plastic rule of thumb. Plastics get really confusing for people. That tends to be the biggest area of confusion. I'm going to try to dispel the confusion here. With the exception of styrofoam which is one type of number six plastic, I'll give you that in a second. Your household plastics are recyclable if you can answer yes to all three of these questions, and they're listed on the back of your do-don't list for your fridge, so you don't have to commit them to memory. Is it, does it have a number one through seven on it? Everybody know where to look for the one through seven, the little triangle? Bottom. It's usually on the bottom, sometimes it can be on the side or the top, but you really want to inspect the vessel and, and look for that chasing arrow triangle with anything between a one and a seven. Is it rigid or hard? Doesn't mean it has to be like super hard, but you know, anything, a yogurt container, that would be considered rigid and hard compared to like a tube of toothpaste, which is kind of floppy. Um, and is it a container? So you need to answer this to all three of these questions. What that would rule out is like plastic silverware, toothpaste tubes, um, mo moisturizer tubes, you know, the floppy kind of stuff. It also rules out every single type of plastic bag except for one, which I'll go into in just a second. So styrofoam is a number six plastic. Number six plastic is polystyrene, and it's clear. When you inject it with air, it becomes expanded polystyrene, and it's still a number six plastic, but it's now full of air. When it's full of air, it's really rigid, it's really hard, you cannot compress the stuff at all, and it's extremely light. The closest <coughs> facility to Maine that, indust that recycles styrofoam on an industrial scale is New Jersey. So you have to imagine taking a tractor trailer and filling it with styrofoam. You're going to truck that thing all the way to New Jersey with maybe one ton of material in it. It is just not economically or environmentally viable. So that's why it needs to go into your solid waste. So don't be confused. If you see a clear container with a number six on it, that's fine. Just not when it has air in it and it becomes styrofoam. Peanuts, um, you know, packing pieces that will come around your television. Uh, anything like that that comes in your packaging, you cannot take that styrofoam in any form. So here's pictures of your plastic dues. Um, again, the five gallon rule applies, and um, that black thing in the back is a flower pot. Believe it or not, those are recyclable. And um, if you have an item that has a metal handle on it, don't worry about it. You can throw that in it as well. Um, but again, when you're thinking about plastics, is it a container, is it hard and rigid, and does it have a one through seven on it? And if you go by those rules every single time, you will be able to answer your own question. So the one exception with regards to the whole plastic bag thing is that we will accept the single-use plastic grocery sacks. That's going to be Hannaford, Shaw's, CVS, Walmart, Target, any type of those plastic bags that when you go to a store and you buy something and you walk out with it in a plastic bag, we can take those. We would encourage you to use re uh, reusable bags because those bags are a tremendous source of pollution if they get free from the recycling. Um, and for the most part, they usually end up tangled up in our equipment and we end up having to take them down to the waste energy plant anyway. But we're going to try. So you can put those in. So when you're thinking about plastic bags, think no plastic bag on the entire face of the planet can go in your recycling except for single-use plastic bags. And that should rule out all of the questions. So here's some plastic don'ts. Um, one of the things that is really important for people to understand is that when you put your recycling out of the curb, you can't take it in a plastic trash bag. Certainly, you don't want to put it in a purple bag because then it's going to get thrown away. But in a clink bag, in a black bag, in a white bag, you can't take the bags. For one, when it goes through our system, it looks like trash because no one can see through it, so they grab it and it goes right into the trash because we're processing 18 tons of material an hour. We're going too fast to be able to open every single bag and go, oh, you know, what's in there? Is it trash? Is it recycling? Not really sure. So we need it to be loose in some type of a container so that Sullivan's can come by, dump it in their truck, and go, or throw the whole thing in if it's just a cardboard box or whatever. Um, so this, um, I hope, is a good illustration of all the different kinds of plastic, what we would call film. 
which is your bubble wrap, plastic bags, um, tarps, things like that. None of that we can take. Um, and, and again, it just go back to that rule, only single-use plastic grocery bags, and you should be safe. Um, these are some other don'ts, and this may look like a sort of hilarious illustration, like, oh my god, who would put a knife in a single sort of recycling? Who would recycle a pumpkin? We get all this stuff almost every day. Um, we get anywhere from 5 to about 30 propane or helium containers a day. Um, either the large ones there or the small green, you know, Coleman ones for the camping. Um, we've had our roof blown off. Um, at one point, we have had um, very close calls with extensive fires. These facilities are very, very dusty. We get spontaneous combustion anyway, just from the dust, never mind any type of flammable, um, pressurized container. So um, all of those uh, vessels over here, in terms of oil tanks, gasoline tanks, they're probably going to have a number on them. They're hard and rigid. They're a container. But they contain volatile fluids, even trace amounts of them. That gives us a big problem. So anything that can be considered hazardous waste cannot go into your recycling. Um, same with batteries, sharps, obviously, e-waste. Um, we're getting lots and lots of e-waste lately. Please take that to a certified e-waste recycler um, because it contains precious metals and uh, is, damages our equipment and gets totally destroyed in the process and so that it may not even be able to be recycled as it comes through our facility. On um, the middle there, you see rope. We consider that long stringy stuff. All long stringy stuff is a major no-no in single stream recycling and I'll show you why in just a second. Here's some other don'ts. Um, again, hilarious list, right? Nope. We get all of this stuff with regularity, including guns, including ammunition. We had one of our guys pull a small cloth duffel bag out last year. It had 70 rounds of live buckshot in it. Oh. Um, we get guns a lot. We've got white thing right there. That's a comforter. We're getting a lot of blankets. We're getting a lot of pillows. Um, and again, the long stringy stuff, Christmas lights, chain, rope, garden hoses, dog runs, extension cords, all of that we get. Um, we get chainsaws. I'll take your next one. <laughs> <laughs> You're usually pretty beat up. I don't know that you want it. But um, again, these are all examples of things that cannot be disposed of in your single stream recycling. Yes, sir. Well, if you took that chainsaw pipe, took the plastic, can you, can you put the plastic in the... Is it a container? No, no, that chainsaw. Right. When you, take, when you rip the plastic yeah. off, yeah. is that plastic a container? What do you mean a container? I'm asking you the three rules. So you rip the plastic off the chainsaw. Yeah. No, it's all plastic. Right, so it's not a container, right? Yeah. Okay, and... You take it? Yeah, because it's not a container. So it has to be a container, has to be hard and rigid, has to have a number on it. So you're going to rule your items out with one of those three rules, or you're not going to at all. So great, the plastic might be recyclable, but it's not a container, so we can't take it. Or it might have a number on it, but it's not rigid, so we can't take it. So just go back to those, those rules over and over again, and that will inform you of whether or not pieces of an item can be recycled. Does that make sense? No. Nope. Okay. <laughs> well, sure, it is. But the problem is, is that the recyclability of any particular item is at the apex of technology and market. We may be able to pull that out. There may be the technology to actually melt it down, but nobody wants to buy some broken up pieces off of a chainsaw. So we need items that are going to squish, that we can put in a bale, and that someone wants to buy from us. So there's lots of things that unfortunately get excluded that are totally recyclable. Everything in the whole world is recyclable if you have someone who wants to do something with it. But what we are is a household item recycling corporation. And so we take items that generally will pass through your kitchen, your bathroom, you know, maybe your shop here and there. Um, but, but we, despite the fact that those, that plastic might very well be recyclable, we don't have someone who wants to buy it from us. So no clothes, no pillows, no blankets. That's not Take it all to Goodwill. Goodwill has a fantastic recycling program for fiber items that are either too stained or too torn to be able to use by someone else. They shred it and it goes back to market and gets turned into new material. And you so, let them know when you bring it in? Well, I mean, if you want to do, you know, if you want like a donation receipt, you can let them know, but you can show them that it has a stain, but 
Um, the Goodwill here in Maine, they actually have um, a system where in all their retail stores, everything goes on the shelf. If it doesn't sell in five weeks, it goes to their corporate facility out in Gorham, and it goes out by weight. For one turn on the floor, all the ice skates go together, all the books go together, all the pots and pans go together. If it's not bought by someone one time out on the floor, it then gets recycled through their just absolutely massive facility where they're bailing and um, compartmentalizing different materials. So even if you think an item is just a disgraceful mess, give it to them. Even shoes, even if you have one shoe, they'll deal with it. Did I see one other question? Yes. The cereal boxes is recyclable, what about the stuff inside? Is that recyclable? Okay, so great question. So a cereal box is recyclable, right? It's paperboard. Is the bag inside the cereal box a single-use plastic shopping sack? Is that, like, if you go to a store, do they give you the thing you bought in a cereal bag? Or do they give it to you in, like, a little bag with a handle? Some, some, some cereal is in a bag. Right, so the bag, what I'm saying about the bag in itself, every bag in the whole world cannot be put in your single sort recycling except for single-use plastic grocery bags. So that, would be so that would be a no. The box is recyclable, the bag inside is not. Okay. okay? Um, so this is how it comes out in the end. These are the bales I'm referring to. This material gets separated out. It gets squished by these massive balers into these cubes that weigh anywhere from 1,200 to 2,200 pounds a piece. When we have a tractor trailer load worth of paper or cardboard or milk jugs from everybody, Waterville's milk jugs don't get made into a bale. They get mixed in with Portland's and South Portland's and Scarborough's and Etna's and Glenburn's, and then everybody's milk jugs go together to market. And so at the end of the day, all of your hard effort of examining what you're putting into your recycling ends up benefiting your community and the process by allowing us to quickly make these bales and turn the product, the, the product around and back out to market. Um, and this is how you make it a circular economy. Buy products that are made with recycled content. You can find almost everything out there under the sun to buy with some component of recycled content in it. And if you do that, that makes the demand for recycled items go up or re, re, like material to make things out of. That makes the market stronger. That makes it everything more healthy in terms of a, a cyclical uh, system. And then, you know, eventually one day, maybe, maybe recycling will be a money maker. A couple of years ago, um, actually I would say before the recession in 2008, Everyone's making money off recycling. We were selling bales of uh, milk jugs for like $1,600 a ton, okay? The economy tanked, all the prices went down, we sell them in the commodities market, so it's a reflection of how the economy is doing. And then it slowly kind of crept back up, and it was doing okay for a while, and then when oil prices slipped, it tanked again. So with everything in life, there's ebbs and flows, things go up and down. Right now, there is no money to be made in recycling at all. If things go back up again, we might even be able to pay the community for the recyclables, but not right now. There just isn't enough value. Yes. I have a question about styrofoam. I understand styrofoam pe peanuts can't be recycled. What about the container I get from Big G's for my sandwich and fries? That's rigid, but I was, I was throwing that away. Mm. That's correct. Is that trash? It's trash because it's styrofoam. Okay. Anything that's made of styrofoam, be it peanuts, food containers, um, packaging, all of it cannot be recycled. Okay, that's what I thought, but yeah. I was confused when you said, is it rigid? The styrofoam is rigid. So the rule is, with the exception of styrofoam, okay. is your plastic rigid, a container, and one through seven. Okay. So, so okay. that's, that's, the styrofoam's the outlier, and it, okay. and it really confuses people a lot, but you can refer to your, um, this handout is the entire presentation, so you can refer to that. Okay, um, so this is one end of my presentation. <laughs> I have two ends because I didn't know how much time I would have and what the interest was. Um, I can end here. Yes? Well, okay. I, think, I think so. Okay, the one other thing I just want to show everyone, I'm just going to kind of cruise through this, is this is what happens with plastic bags at our, at our facility. So 
these are, these are star screen separators. They're basically these large beds of axles with these big rubber stars on them. They're spinning. The material all mixed in together is getting pushed up into the system. And because cardboard tends to be large and flat, it rides up and over those stars and all the little everything else falls down in between onto another conveyor belt. That's how we separate cardboard. That's how we separate paper. And that's how we separate glass. So you see all the negative spaces in between those cogs? That's what happens when we get plastic bags. At least once a day, if not twice a day, we have to shut the whole system down, stop processing, and send in five bags of box cutters to hack all that off, and then it goes down to the waste of energy plastic plant. Plastic bags this size. Yep. Even the single-use plastic shopping bags, honestly, those get wrapped around as well. We say we take them because we know we're going to get them anyway. We try to recycle as many as we can, but when you're thinking about plastic film, this is the ugly side of it. Um, so I'm going to end on keep up the good work. Does anyone have any questions? <laughs> Would it be wise to throw away a plastic bag? You know, um, it's really the best possible thing to do with the plastic bags is to take them to Hanford. Um, or to Walmart because they actually have specific recycling for those plastic bags only. Second best, you can put them in your trash, you can put them in the recycling. Because you're not a landfill community, your plastic bags are being burned for energy, so they're not going to be floating around all over the place and getting stuck in trees. You know, try it. Put them in with us. You know, we'll try to recycle them. Oh, I have been. Yeah. Keep right on doing it. It's fine. It really is fine. I just wanted to kind of highlight for folks the reason why these these ones in particular are so problematic for us. Great question. Anyone else have questions? All right. You thank wanna, you. Yeah. So we want to thank everyone for coming. Three weeks from now, well, a little bit less than three weeks from now, June 9th is the election. So please come and vote, whichever way you choose to. The hours are, I believe, 8 to... 8 to 8. 8 to 8. 8 to 8. 8 to 8. 8, to eight. Eight to eight. Eight to eight. So said it. Good. 8 to 8. Tuesday the night. Thank you. One other thing, everyone. My colleague is going to be here doing a very in-depth presentation in the same room next week on the 26th. Yeah. Yeah.